So modernization is a, a thing I want to reclaim. I, I've spoken about this before, like progress. I'm kind of sick of the left having like some kind of monopoly on this worldview. It's like, oh yeah, we're for the future. Like, You're not. There's no future with you people. There's just destruction with you people. And I think I can prove it. We'll start off just by some of the leftists who destroyed everything they touched. Uh, Mao and his men. So there's Mao's Great Famine, which went so well. And they're going to have a dash to the future. Great leap forward. Yeah, no, I didn't go to the future. Everyone just starved. It was a complete waste of time. And I think the same is true as all leftist ideology. And I can probably prove it, at least with the West. So getting into our context, uh, the Labour Party put out this crappy tweet, as they usually do, you know, propagandized posting. Yeah. What are the points in here, though? It's about trans day of visibility. Who cares? God, I can't see any other time of the year. Anyway, but they say in here, in the last point, we're going to modernize the outdated Gender Recognition Act. Because what the hell do they mean? We know what they mean by that. Which is the, well, we're going to modernize it. What does modernizing mean? We're going to make sure your kids can do it. Whatever they want. That's modern. Like, that's not modernizing anything. That's not progressing anything. That's destruction. And if you go to the, the just the uh, act they're talking about from 2004. Thank you, Tony Blair. Um, who did something mm -hmm. in the 1990s. I don't know. Seems everything went downhill since then, but who knows. Uh, but it's not the worst place in the world for, for craziness on this basis. I mean, Canada, uh, I think, has is, is now topped it properly. If you the next thing, we can see what I'm talking about. A lot of people notice this. Meanwhile, in Canada, the Joker has taken over and uh, it's going to issue an edict. Is this a Batman movie, is it? I mean, everyone was hoping. <laughs> uh, for people listening. No, I can't even describe it for people listening. This is actual madness. Why are two people wearing masks? I just noticed that. Nobody else is wearing a mask at this clown show. But the two of them are just like, well, I better keep the mask on. Don't want to get COVID. So I did, got, yeah, two of them are. So Five of them at, are not. Yeah, we're looking at some lunatic who stood at a podium that just has protect 2S LGBTQIA plus written on it with the uh, you know racial pride flag at the front there. C can I touch on 2S just for a moment? Because sure, I delved into this rabbit hole. You coming out? Which is, no, no, not coming out. No, no, I'll leave that for another podcast. That's good. Uh, so so they, they, they talk about, um, yeah, um, Two spirited, two, they talk about two spirited females is a distinct term that constitutes a fourth gender because they talk about two spirited males or a Sorry, third gender. Four? So two spirited males amount to a third gender, and two spirited females are another distinct, and they refer to a fourth gender. Women but, always coming last. Well, <laughs> but obviously, many of us have no idea about this uh, interesting <laughs> subject. And look, at it's front, it's. 2S, that, that's the first yeah. one. We need to protect 2S people. It even beats the L. It does. It's And the T, actually, which should be first, in, in my opinion, most important. But two-spirit individuals were experts in traditional arts, such as pottery making, basket weaving, and the manufacture and decoration of items made from leather. <laughs> are, you, two, are you messing with Because <laughs> like, there's a whole, this is spiritual, this is um, kind of cultural background, this is gender, this is a whole mixture of strangeness so two-spirited females engaged in activities such as hunting and warfare and became leaders in war and even chiefs two-spirited identity was widely believed to be the result of supernatural intervention mm. two-spirited people typically form sexual and emotional relationships with non-two-spirit members of their own sex and two other two-spirit people were believed to be lucky in love and be able to bestow this luck on others and national gatherings of two-spirit people have been held since early 1990s and regional gatherings are held in many parts of the country. <laughs> <laughs> it just adds to this show. Yeah. Um, Top that. <laughs> religious nonsense. <laughs> so, if, we get, if we can get it back on screen, John, just this this um, image so people can... Yeah, so there's that. Oh, God. But it's... it's, it's all right, I'll describe it for people listening, because otherwise I feel rude. Uh, so we have um, the Joker stood in front of that, and then we have uh, some white woman in the background there who's um, looking very concerned, some some Asian lady who is apparently some politician, and the whole reason for this meeting was they were proposing that it should be illegal to make offensive remarks anywhere near queer strippers, which we're all going to call Drag Queen Storia. And then we got the two masked people, um, some other man in a dress, and then, I don't know, a midget. Uh, well, joining good, them because COVID doesn't exist in the transgender world. No, it doesn't. that's actually quite good. If they were masked me, that would stop the spread of transgender. I don't it, know. So I, I think for YouTube, we have to say that it obviously does. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be shot. <laughs> but we'll go to um, 
the states in the United States because um, they've, they've been up to something. Don't know if you noticed this. Interesting. Gender affirming youth care bans in the US. And you can see it by state there. Uh, Idaho and Indiana have both joined the ban now. So, goodbye. Mm. Mutilating children. Not on our watch. As you see, a whole bunch of other states are already doing that. And the ones in orange are uh, debating it currently. But the ones in green have currently not, but there's never things they can, you know, get on the train. So this basically helps you know if you want to emigrate to the States where you want to live. Yeah. I don't know, where were you recently? <laughs> <laughs> Could we put gun control in there as well? Yeah. <laughs> Mix it in. Can make the uh, most base state list. Oh, so the points, <laughs> point system. Yeah. Load of Cedar's top 10 states to move to. It's not a bad idea. Right? <laughs> anyway, but we'll go to Matt Walsh because Matt Walsh has been uh, having some debates. Uh, this one where he insists that uh, humans come with two legs, usually. And um, wasn't taken well by the audience member for some reason. I'm glad you added usually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Legs are a spectrum, as uh, some might say. But we'll get to the next one here as well, which uh, or debating someone else about whether or not they need constant affirmation by everyone around them, because for some reason the rest of us don't. No. Another difference in the world. I can't talk much about those, but I'm, I'm highly recommending you and check out those clips. As you can see, they've got millions of views because he is insisting that reality matters. I, I, and this clip on the Dylan one, actually, we talked about at the beginning, is great, know, where he, he discusses about the the tampox, tampax, tampox, tampax. Um, <laughs> that because Dylan I think we do need carries... insulting names for every company that engages in this. So, yeah, no uh, over here. But but he he does a great like a one minute short just discussing. Why why would people think they need to carry Tampax with them and, and put pass them around toilets to other people? But it's just well, weird. <laughs> in America. <laughs> but he does say as a man he doesn't know, but he is sure that this is not the norm. Yeah. <laughs> but, but my point being, um, this isn't modernization. Nothing about this is dashing to the future. This this is all how about I shove my head in the toilet and swirl it for no reason. It's just like, okay, you're gonna injure yourself. Um <laughs> Cool. Well, if we actually want to look at proper modernization, we can go to the UK and um, guess who? It's Kemi Badenoch. Literally the only human on earth yep. in uh, British politics in a position of power who's able to actually do things that are actually modernizing the world. So, transgender women could be banned from same-sex spaces, reads the headline from the Times. Kemi Badenoch is considering plans to change the Equality Act to introduce explicit legal protections for biological women in same-sex spaces and sports for the first time ever. So this isn't just like, I'm going to ban the men from competing with the girls in the high school, or I'm, I'm not sure about transitioning kids. That seems a bit mad. Uh, this is, in law, women exist. This is a proper dash to the future, in my opinion. <laughs> Don't know about you. It is, and I'm blown away, actually, by Rishi Sunak, because I have no expectations of anything uh, as a, of what he will do. I don't have any expectations of any politicians. I have no hope. But no, no. <laughs> um, but actually, obviously the stuff on on grooming gang, the stuff on this, and he seems to be coming out with quite a number of common sense statements it's and amazing. policy every, ideas. Every time they go down in the polls, yeah, they realise, what if I wasn't a race <laughs> communist? It's true. Ah, that might that might be popular. And then they're not a race communist for like a month, <laughs> and then they go back up and they're like, oh yeah, what if I was a race communist? Well, it's... I guess they're coming near what an election eighteen months, and they have to think, yeah. what about our constituent conservative voters? Uh, maybe we should be conservative for a year. People still have to vote for us? Crap. I know. <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, we'll get back to the whole thing in a minute. Um, yeah. But uh, Kemi is someone who's actually, I have she some is. hope in, rather than yeah, literally yeah. everyone else. Um, I could name, I could name, you know, Andrew Bridgen. He's not in the party anymore. Um, there's a guy called, um, I won't mention his name actually, because I'll send you that later. But uh, so the Women and Equalities Minister has said the government wants to look at creating a legal distinction. <laughs> legal. <laughs> distinction between. People who were born female and those who weren't. Did we not always have that distinction? No, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, we've, um... The whole male and female thing. <laughs> Grog. I presume Grog, <laughs> from the Neanderthal tribe, wrote the Equality Act. <laughs> well, he just, I don't know, everyone's just hairy and big, so the same thing. <laughs> just to Grog over there. No, no, no. The, the writing here was uh, w between women and, um, those who transition to become a woman, so, you know, those not women. Um... Yeah. So, so she's asked the HCR, it says oh, European <laughs> Human Rights no, no, Commission. The, the, the uh, what is it? Equality Human Rights uh, Committee. Commission. So, committee. So they the, they work for the government. So she has to go to the committee and be like, hey, so I'm the minister. You're my advisors. Tell me what a woman is. All right. Good luck. See you in a week. Came back in a week and went, well, what is it? Um, adult human female. Thank you. I'm going to put that in law. 
We so, should ask Keir Stammer because he's getting closer to maybe understanding. Maybe he could help them out. Yeah, so she's at the point now. She's got the, the green light from the committee and she's just going to Parliament and being like, <clears throat> I have uh, something to announce. I have made a discovery. Women. <laughs> I, I have spoken to some civil servants and yeah. they have told me <laughs> there might be a distinction. I need pregnancy leave. Why? <laughs> and it's, turns out there was there was a reason as to why. It wasn't, it wasn't just because... um. It feels like it. Anyone who has been granted a gender recognition certificate is at present legally recognised as belonging to the opposite sex, which obviously doesn't make any sense because no. they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I think Grog managed to overlook that when he was right again in 2004. Uh, in a letter to Baroness Faulkner, the chair woman of the Equality and Human Rights Commission, Badenoch said she wanted her to consider the benefits or otherwise of changing the legal definition of sex to include sex instead of feels. <laughs> I get this, that, yeah, you wonder how, you wonder how, the, the danger is, of course, you've got a government that, that tries to put things back in the box to normality, and then you get Keir Stammer who comes in, he says, sorry to blow this all out of the water, and then he comes in and goes, what was that, about 99.9% .9 of women yeah. not having a, yeah? One of a thousand women does have yeah. a penis, in my experience. Exactly. I don't know whether... How many that... wives have you had? <laughs> well, I was wondering whether that's actually personal experience, whether he's done a survey. What else could it be? <laughs> <laughs> a thousand Labour members line up. Pull down your trousers. <laughs> In her response, Faulkner said that the move merits further consideration. Consideration. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Women. This is a simple yes or no. Yeah. <laughs> and could help bring greater legal clarity in eight areas. Eight areas? I thought more. <laughs> <laughs> Women exist, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I thought maybe more than eight places in the world that might be useful, but no, no it's eight, turns out. <laughs> Talking about Kafka. I would say in two areas, the areas of male and female. No, no, eight. Um, eight. Including single-sex spaces are uh, only accessed by biological women. Uh, sport and positive discrimination are three of the areas out of the eight that she mentions. Mm. However, she said it could be potentially disadvantageous to say that women exist. <laughs> Who's it going to be disadvantageous? For trans women, in cases about equal pay and sexual discrimination... <clears throat> With the rights of trans women, it affects transfer to trans men. Do you know at some point you get quite confused? I don't know what that statement means. Good, neither do I. I don't know. <laughs> what the <laughs> are you talking just... about? <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'll try to explain it. So she's saying that if, if I want to be a, a woman, yep. Peter, and I come... You. Yeah, and I, I come to work for you, and I say, Peter, my old pal, old friend, I'd like a job, and you say, sure, but you're one of them women things, so I'm going to pay you 90 cents on the dollar or whatever stupid figure they made yep. up, right? Uh, because that's how that's how that works, right? As the employer just says, "Well, woman, yeah. lock it down." And and then I realise that I go, "Hang on a minute, I was I'm a woman, so I've been discriminated against. I sue you for discrimination in my pay." Yeah. Um, I could do that currently because I'm a woman, and I can say I was discriminated against on the basis of being a woman. But if we recognise that maybe I'm not, maybe I, you know, I got, got some stuff that makes me not a woman, then I can't sue on the basis of being a woman because I'm not one. This sounds like a Monty Python story. <laughs> yeah. So we're so, so th there's one side that says Stan has the right to have babies, and the other side, like, well, maybe maybe Stan can't have babies. <laughs> I don't know what the hell she means by the rights of trans women will be transferred to trans men. Presumably, it's that trans men are obviously women, so they'd be able to sue on the basis of being discriminated against because they're women, whereas. They can't do that currently because they're trans men. And if they try to sue, the government says, well, no, you're a man. You can't be discriminated against. It's like a game of pass the parcel and you kind of find out what's in it. It's funny how rights are not universal. No. Instead, they're, they're no. handed about. Amazing. So, on balance, she says, we believe that redefining sex in the Equality Act to mean biological sex... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which creates rationalizations, simplifications, clarity, amazing, and or reductions in risk for maternity services providers and users of other services such as gay and lesbian associations, sport organizations and employers. Um, therefore, it must be having merits for con further consideration. I, I'm kind of a bit weirded out by the idea that there was 
reductions of risk for maternity services. Like, there were men turning up being like, you need to check if I'm pregnant. That really confuses me. Because that was actually the question Matt Walsh asked that protester earlier. Yeah, yeah. Because that person was an EMT. So he said, well, if you have a trans woman and they say, doctor, doctor, I might be pregnant, do you run a test? And the protester was like, well, obviously not, because I can't happen Ooh. so well i i don't know what like the baroness is saying that maybe men are turning up to the nhs being like well come on have a look-see give us a scan i mean it could be hate speech to tell the man who's gone <laughs> in that he's not pregnant i presume so so presumably they did the scan and yeah. we're like um you gonna have, to keep, gonna have to keep trying my friend <laughs> <laughs> not pregnant this time having a ward full of men who think they may be pregnant and you're worried about bed blocking. Yeah. She said that at present, the starting point that a trans woman with a gender recognition certificate can access women-only services, forcing hospitals to make a careful balancing act to justify excluding trans women. So presently, the doctor has to sit there and be like, do I have any empty beds? Uh, no. So you can't come in. I can actually be a transphobe because someone might die. Yes. But if there are empty beds... I can't be a transphobe and point out that you're not pregnant, my lad. Uh, instead, I have to sit you up and do the scan, because otherwise it would be harm. It would be much easier if this was clear and they went back to the basic stuff, and then that would help hospitals, yep. those staff working in the health service, to know, mm. well, no, you're not. I, this is what I mean by I think it actually is true that Kevin could turn around and be like, well, I am actually modernising the world, <laughs> at least the UK, by, by saying that um, women... A biological definition of sex would make it simpler to make a women's only ward a space for biological women, said the committee. <laughs> the very serious committee. <clears throat> the the government-run committee that get paid by us to come up with such things as, oh uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the conclusion. Lesbian groups would also be able to restrict membership to women, mm. um, which is, they're not currently able to do. No. For some reason. Um, Currently, a lesbian has sex with men as well. Which, so a man can be a lesbian. Yep. I mean, it's funny when you, you hit on a girl you in the club and she head. says, I'm sorry, I'm a lesbian. You say, aha, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then legally, she can't even leave. Uh, also, if you want to book a women-only book club, I don't know what, I don't know why that's the example that she brought up, whatever. She says, yeah, that, that would be legalized. Uh, it would also extend pregnancy and maternal rights to trans men because they can get pregnant. For is some this, reason. Is this what happens if you drink too much Bud Light? I presume. Like, <laughs> Did I this mess up with your head I that much? I think the British government, sometime in the 1990s, something happened. And ever since, the whole British government has been drinking Bud Light. Yes. While the rest of us have been downing normal pints. And, um, well, now Bednox turned up and being like, well, I, I drink vodka to get through this. <laughs> no. Well, all the Eastern Europeans enjoy their brandy and vodka. They're, yeah. they've, they, this hasn't affected them. I don't know why they drink in Nigeria, but it's not Bud Light, but I looked at it. <laughs> but, <laughs> she's turned up being like, um, no. Biological women who have transitioned to men, that's trans men. Though, and enable trans men to benefit from positive action, such as women-only shortlists. That's doubly funny. So, of course, we have discrimination against men, which is currently harming trans men yep. because they're men, which is, you know, harming women, and we can't have that. So what we're going to do is ensure that those women can get the discrimination they deserve in favour of them. The it, it's like there used to be a comedian who oh, used God. to be known as Eddie Izzard. Yeah. He's now, what is it, Susie Eddie? Yeah. That's his yep. name? <laughs> he's going to lose. So he's currently on an all-women shortlist for Labour. Yes. He's, he's um, getting that female privilege now revoked by Badenoch, who was like, I'm not so sure. Anyway, however, these are the downsides. Oh. The horrible things oh. that will happen if Badenoch gets our way. <laughs> it would result in a transfer of rights. Because rights, rights, you buy them like Pokemon cards. Yes. In some areas, from trans women to trans men, such as equal pay, direct sex discrimination, and indirect sex discrimination. Direct and indirect. Yes. <laughs> Don't know, don't know. Well, there's... From every direction. <laughs> yeah. But this is the UK conversation. I just find this hilarious. They were all sitting around being like, so who should get the socialist privileges? And it's like, well, women. Yeah, but what about... Because we also agree that trans... Yeah, that's... Oh, crap. Now the women aren't getting the socialist privileges we gave them. And we're going to have to move that back. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to sit into this committee discussing this? Oh, just absolutely bad. Just, no, 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 I have to bite my tongue. I have to sit in my I can't say anything. Carol Vorderman turned up to the committee meeting about this. Did uh, she? Yeah, it was whining about how transphobic it was. I didn't include it because it was just stupid. <laughs> so I wasn't going to waste everyone's time Aww. on it. 
But um, yeah, I mean, we'll get to the next link here because, of course, as you mentioned, I love this account. He keeps putting out these really weird <laughs> like graphics, but they're so true. Um, could not being a gay race communist be a surprise vote winner? Discussion at the panel. Um, apparently, Kevin Badenoch's department were like, hmm, yeah, maybe we shouldn't do all the gay race communist in charge things we should do and instead do popular things, such as not being a gay race communist. I, I am eternally grieved as to why they don't just do this normally, but they're down like was it thirty points in the in the polls yep, to Labour, yep. so they've they've decided to do the um, stock thing of what if we're not gay race communists until we're elected again, and then we'll do that. So I, yeah, this is why I have no hope in this case. I, I'm still on the uh, just just vote for reform or whoever else is the the rightest party there in your constituency. But moving on because we'll check in with the opposing argument because okay okay it was the times that read the article they could just be not giving us the time of day as to what is the genuinely left wing argument that blows away Badenoch and proves mm. that no this is a bad idea to say that women right all right this dude's a lawyer as you see he's a, he's a legal director in the HRC and uh, he has some a for, former legal director he has some thoughts thoughts are quote the proposed change in law is nonsense on stilts <laughs> to say is that a legal term? Women are women, men are men. That's nonsense on stilts. Okay, okay, right. The suggestion is legally illiterate. <laughs> Say that men and women, right? Unworkable. And is just another way of using trans people's actual lives as pawns in the culture wars. No. Yeah, I, I thought it was... Uh, <laughs> I thought it was biological <laughs> fact, but... Yeah. It would overturn some of the purposes of the Gender Recognition Act. Good. Make it possible to discriminate against trans people on a whole range of circumstances where it is currently outlawed. I, you can't discriminate against people for their sex, so no. that's not going to happen anyway, no. so whatever. It's pure transphobia based on misleading, unevidenced transphobic assumptions that wow. women don't have penises. <laughs> wow. E.g. the notion that a trans man is an appropriate employee where there is an occupational requirement for a woman to do the job is offensive in both the trans man and the service users. So he's saying here that the real problem is that if I have a job, say, stretch surfing a woman, right? That needs to be done by a woman. So to require that it's a woman is transphobia? Mm. Okay, okay, all right, whatever. I don't know what other job he's thinking of, but he, he ends it off with the idea that LGB associations would particularly benefit from the proposed change is vile because lesbians love cock, as everyone knows. They just, they just love having sex with men and sucking penis. So that's the number one thing lesbians are known for, I thought. And the idea that they don't do that is vile, according to the former legal director of the EHRs. Yeah, I can see where they've gone wrong. I'm not convinced. I, I, he's, not, he's not changed my mind. We'll get a mermaid's. Come on, the, the uh, trans yeah. mutilation tragedy. They, they've got some thoughts. It's extremely distressing to see the UK's equality watchdog, the EHRC, seeking to strip trans people of their rights. Oh, really? Well, well they, they argue this with a, with a very good argument underneath. With no supporting evidence to support such a stance that men and women are different, and no detail of how this would work in practice, because how, how would you? Figure it out. Uh, the HRC is doubling down on its politicised anti-trans position. Yeah, I'm not convinced by that one either. <laughs> so, have, have mermaids not been shut down yet? I, I think that Twitter investigations account is about all that's active. <laughs> <laughs> is arguing that they can tweet the nonsense. Literally no way <laughs> to tell the difference. Pink news, though, are the best. They just I have to end on that. Mm. Gold. About how you can tell who's really modernising the world and who isn't. So a trans activist horrified as UK government considers making sex mean biological sex. Mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real headline. I haven't had to even get an archive for that. That's what they put up. So Helen Belcher over here. Sounds like a fake name, but it's not. Yeah. Chair of Transactual. Is she the one that's horrified? She is personally horrified. Oh. I love how she had the name of a group. It was actually, it's really, okay. Uh, so the EHRC letter seems to be inciting that the watchdog is keen to assist in the redefinition of the word woman to mean woman. Yeah, but they probably are. Uh, <laughs> she says which the word woman has been understood to include trans women for many, many years, such as since 2004. What? Before then, no. Since 2004, yes. And, and now, no. <laughs> so, I mean, come on, Peter. If... 
It's a long-standing tradition in Britain since 2004, the ancient era of yeah. 2004. Nobody lives before 2004, I, I've been told. It, it, it was the founding moment of our country. In a move driven by political desire to manufacture fear more than any systemic evidence. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pure fear. Did this all happen from 2004? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, I think um, this. I think the whole world was rewritten. This game. <laughs> she ends it off with a corker. Our challenge is the increasingly misnamed EHRC and Badenoch is why is it necessary now to try redefine the word woman to exclude trans women and to include trans men for some reason? It's not like they can get pregnant or anything. Oh, wait, they can. Uh, they when can. it's <laughs> it's just they can. When there is no evidence of problems actually caused by the understanding that has existed for decades. I mean, you've had your head in the, in the sand to come up with that. I mean, the, the trans rapists, for one, I would have thought. You know, all those men who said they were women, we put them in a female prison and they raped the inmates. And then we went, how could we have stopped this? I thought that was like, that would be the one that would make everyone go, okay, yes, needs to end. But there are still holdouts. No. They say trans people no longer seem to be people in their eyes. Yeah, they, they, they didn't redefine them as men and women. They redefined them as goblins. <laughs> they are inhuman monsters. No. No, they, no. <laughs> no longer people. You actual lunatic. Our pains and struggles are seemingly irrelevant. They're very relevant. That's the whole point of the conversation, but whatever. We'll end this off with the best one. The best response is from feminist and trans rights activist Katie... Aristocratic name that I can't pronounce. She told Pink News that she was horrified and instantly had a panic attack. Oh, no. She fears that if the definition of sex was restricted to include women, okay, <laughs> it would have a wide widespread ramifications on her day-to-day -day life. I couldn't work, she said. I, I, I think women are allowed to work. I don't think it's a crime. <laughs> so if we redefine you as a woman, I don't think you're barred. I, I, I would have thought. I've just brought a house. Lucky bastard. <laughs> so what is that? Well, you're doing well. I feel like I can't live here. My friends are here. My family is here. My parents are getting older. Sounds like you probably can live here. Yeah. Um, they ended off with, will they even be able to visit if I move to Ireland or the Netherlands? What am I even going to do? So she's worried she has to move to Ireland and she won't be able to visit anyone in Ireland. I feel so isolated and totally powerless. She turns it off with, now, my love, um, if you are a woman, I'm here to reassure you, uh, we haven't made a crime to work as a woman yet, uh, but if, if we do, I'll let you know, uh, so then you can move to Ireland or the Netherlands. Um, otherwise, I think you can carry on living in your lovely house that you've just brought in this economy, and, uh, and, and you, can, you can stay with your parents and friends, and, and nothing will affect you, woman. And except maybe if you're um, a biological male... Uh, you're still allowed to work, it turns out. In fact, you are probably you probably should go and work. Get, get a job, you hippie. Otherwise, you're going to pay for that house. Uh, again, nothing's going to happen to you. But that's the thing. You, these people who are losing their minds, not modernising anything. The person who's actually modernising the world is, is getting rid of grug scrawlings that was the Gender Recognition Act, and instead being like, um, women, uh, made up of women, and men, made up of men. So, good job. Good job, uh, they'd knock, and mad people in tears. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast The Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Contemplation series, this episode on Did We Domesticate Ourselves? If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.